My name is Laura Alford, and now I'd like to introduce some concepts around damage stability. So we've been talking about stability with GM and GZ and all these numbers and letters and such. Um, that all had to do with intact stability. Um, so now we've looked at a little bit about how some tricky loading conditions. Now what happens if the ship is actually damaged? What's going to happen? Um, so in general, ships usually get damaged because of operator errors. Um, we don't maintain them properly. We take many errors that lead to collisions, right? Like one ship running into another isn't because somebody took one wrong turn. It's because many things went wrong all in a row and the things got compounded. Um, though sometimes it just is out of our hands, right? A ship somehow gets caught in a storm or a hurricane, and, and it does happen. So we need to... Uh, keep that in mind and we need to design around it and try and make sure that our ships can be as safe as possible. Um, so when the ship is damaged, what happens to its stability, right? Um, some ways that it can sink. Uh, one of them is foundering. So foundering is you run over something and you damage the bottom of the hull and the hull starts, the boat, the ship starts to fill with water and it floods and it floods and it floods to the point where weight is now greater than buoyancy and the ship sinks. Um, you'll see here the ship has just sunk straight down, right? So this is different from some of the other ways of sinking where it's not healed over at all. Um, capsizing we have talked about before with st with the initial stability, right? Uh, capsize is when the ship heals over so much that it does not have a riding moment to bring itself back upright again. Um, a recent example of this was the Costa Concordia, which you might remember. Um, uh, one, the last way here that I'm going to talk about is plunging. So plunging is when the, sh the front of your ship is damaged, the bow, and flooding begins in the bow and it spreads from there, right? So the bow sinks and sinks and sinks some more until finally it plunges below the surface of the water and it sinks. Um, very famous example of this, this is the Titanic. That's how it sunk. Um, all right, so your ship has become damaged. It's going to flood. What are the effects of that flooding? Um, if you recall... GM is our measure of initial stability, and in order to get GM, you have to calculate the length BM. Uh, BM is calculated by the second moment of the water plane area about the center line divided by the underwater volume of the ship, so those two are shown here. Um, when the ship is damaged, you lose some of your original underwater volume due to the flooding, right? It's lost buoyancy. Um, similarly, you lose some water plane area also due to, this, due to the flooding. The ship is going to sink, which means that the draft will increase until all of that, the lost underwater volume is regained elsewhere. So now you've got a higher draft, but you're still missing that buoyancy in the bit in the middle there. Um, so now you have new underwater volume. It equals the old underwater volume, but the shape is very different, right? Um, so the... Uh, the center of buoyancy has increased because draft has increased, which means that KB has increased. You have a new center line uh, water plane area that's less than the old water plane area because assuming the flooding is contained, um, the, the water plane area isn't going to change radically apart from that part that's missing due to the flooded section. Um, as a result of all of that, your draft will change, your trim will change, the transverse and longitudinal BM dimensions will change, and also heal. Um, with the change in the water plane area, that will decrease your the second moment of it about the center line. Um, because of that, then BM will decrease because G BM is decreasing. Um, KB is, uh, like I mentioned, goes up a little bit, but BM decreases a lot more. And so the, the end result is that you have less initial stability. So this change in GM here due to the damage condition, that is calculating damage stability. And we'll get to... Uh, post a separate video on an example calculation of that. Um, in general, how much space floods, right? So the hull is damaged, how much is actually going to flood? Because that you need that in order to figure out that, G, that new GM calculation. The amount depends on the permeability of the space. Here's what I mean by that. Um, you have a ship, there's a cross section, right? And in the bottom there is a dry space or a dry tank. Um, if the hull is damaged and water can enter the ship, then permeability is the amount of a given space that's able to be flooded by that water. So if you had 100% permeability, that means that 100% of the space can be filled with water. So I mean, the entire thing. Now, in reality, that's not going to happen because every space will have beams and stiffeners and something in there. So the most you're going to see is about 95% permeability. 
Um, if you had 75% permeability, that means that 25% of that space is being taken up with machinery and stores and beams and doorways, you know, things like that, um, leaving 75% of it open and able to be flooded. Um, similarly, 50% means half of it is sucked up with ship stuff and half of it is open air. Um, if you had 25%, it means that oh, oh, three quarters of this space is filled up with stores, um, beams, machineries, things that will not let water in, um, leaving 25% of that space able to be flooded. Uh, if you had 0% permeability, it means that that space is completely filled and it is not it will not let any water in now in reality that's never going to happen because you're always going to have a little bit of empty space but that so that's the concept of permeability um, in general there's some guidelines for the permeability of different spaces um, anything where you have cargo or stores um, provisions that's going to have you generally use about a 60 percent permeability unless you have reason to think otherwise machinery spaces are 85 and passenger crew and all other spaces are 90 percent and this makes sense sort of in our head right it's it, passenger spaces or living rooms and bunk rooms and bathrooms and hallways, right? Most of that is air, right? So that's why the permeability is so high. Um, I'm including some links here. I'm, I won't click on them. You can do this um, at the end of the video here. Um, but if you want to get an idea of what it looks like on the inside of a ship, these were just some videos I found on YouTube. Um, the roll-on, roll-off one I think is kind of interesting because this is one, it shows them loading the cars on it. So you can see there's a lot of empty space in that. Um, the, the tours and the, the submarine and the anatomy of a submarine shows that it, space is very dear on a submarine. So they're going to cram stuff in there in a much different way than you would if you were designing a roll-on, roll-off ship or a container ship or something like that. So this gives, I think, a nice idea of, okay, passenger spaces have 90% permeability. What does that actually mean in real life? So you take a look at these videos and that'll give you some idea. Um, so that's an idea about uh, flooding and um, the effects of it. Um, again, I'll, I'll try and post a video on uh, how to actually calculate damage stability with the, the, the new GM calculation, but it's, it's rather involved, so I'm going to stick with just these high-level concepts here. Um, so thanks again for watching, and see you later.